Uh, so we'll have a presentation by Paul Karnbeek uh, about the exhibition on Frida Kahlo and Mount Ararat. Uh, Paul is the head of marketing and communications at the Trans Museum. And uh, he will discuss the possibilities of commercial activities and fundraising and share tips on the do's and don'ts. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot for the invitation, um, Ilya and Björn. And um, I'm very honored to uh, to speak to you, colleagues of uh, the museum in Armenia and uh, uh, Azerbaijan and Georgia. Uh, as I told you before, I've been there. I've been twice in Armenia and one time in Georgia. So I haven't been in Azerbaijan. What a pity, but uh, we will come there also. Um, as Lilia told you, I am uh, head of marketing and communication in the Drents Museum, and that is located in Assen in the north of the Netherlands. I work there now about nine years before I was also working in uh, marketing and communication in the Fries Museum, another museum in the north of the Netherlands. Um, but this is a very nice place to be, I must say. Next, uh, Lilia, please. Yeah. Okay, here you see our, uh, our museum in Assen. Assen is a, rather, uh, is a small city. 50,000 to 60,000 visitor uh, inhabitants. And here you see the left circle is the old building. And on the right, you see the new building of the museum, um, which I'll tell you later more about. Next, please. This is the old uh, building of the museum. It is a monument, a Rijksmonument, we call it. And uh, before there was the government of the province of Drenthe, was seating here and now we use this beautiful building for museum uh, exhibition halls and also conference rooms. Next please. And this is our new building. Um, the renovation of the new, the new construction was built in 2011. 
Erik van Egeraad was the architect and he gave us the possibility to to organize big exhibitions, more international. It's about uh, 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 1000 square meter, one hall. So beautiful to, um, to organize uh, uh, exhibitions. Next, please. Well, about the mission um, from our museum. And I've seen that it was not written uh, correctly, the mission. The Drenthe Museum shows the world a view of Drenthe and offers Drenthe a view of the world. So that must the right one be. It's now the same is said. Museum, we want to be a museum for everybody, for everyone, inclusive and also for people who have mental or physical um, restrictions. Very important for us to be there for everyone. Our vision is we want to be a successful museum of international significance and offer an enriching experience to as many people as possible with stories about archaeology, art and history. Next, please. A few uh, facts and figures about our museum. This was the, uh, the billboard during the Frida Kahlo exhibition, as you recognize. We, uh, we are one of the oldest museums in the Netherlands from 1845. Our collection has about 90,000 pieces, archaeology, history, art around uh, concerning the 19th century, end of 19th century, and we have modern and temporary art. About 50 um, full-time equivalents uh, who work here, 50 volunteers, and we are subsidized by, um, that's most remarkable, I think, by province of Drenthe, by the state, and by the city of Assen. And nowadays, I mean, not reckoning the two corona years, we have about average about 200,000 visitors each year. So that's quite good. We do have an, uh, uh, um, the province, they want us to, to have 150,000 visitors. That's the kind of an, uh, yeah, a condition they have. So, but we, uh, we normally, we, uh, we um, well, we do that. Next, please. We have a few highlights, of course, and maybe you know them, maybe not. This is the girl from Ide. In Dutch, it says, het meisje van Ide. Ide is a small town. Uh, in the region of Drenthe, and there was uh, this uh, this body, this buck body of the girl from Ida was found uh, around uh, 40, 40 years before Christ. And the Drenthe Museum has one of the biggest collections of buck bodies, of mummies, you can say. So it's very, yeah, um, often they go abroad, they go to uh, other exhibitions, to Canada, they went to Japan. So uh, it's a very important collection for us. Next, please. And one of the oldest is the eldest boat. Maybe you can you can read it also good. The oldest boat in the world, the canoe. It's about eight thousand years old. Um, and one of our uh, highlight pieces in the in the um, it's very vulnerable because you can see it's eight thousand years old. So at the moment it's not on display, but we will have a new presentation in two thousand and twenty three, and then we will show it again. Next, please. Yes, you saw the, the film of the Van Gogh Museum, and we also have Van Goghs in our museum. We have two Van Goghs, two paintings, and this is the peat boat, the turfschuit from Vincent. He made it in 1883 because he was working and living three months in the region of Drenthe. So he was there. Um, okay. <laughs> What's happening? Um, he worked there for, um, he lived there for three months. So there is a small amount of paintings and uh, uh, yeah, small amount of paintings he made there. Next, please. So if you can say we have two important components in our museum. And uh, one is the international exhibitions. Uh, since I think 2010, we organize each year or every two year, two years, a very big international uh, exhibition um, concerning uh, archaeology, or it has to do with art, figurative art. These are the two items uh, issues. And the last decade, we organized uh, what I said, an, an exhibition from Georgia, gold from Georgia, from Iran. We had an exhibition about uh, 
uh, Russian realism. We had an exhibition about uh, Nubia. And now we have the next, please. Now we have this uh, on display in our museum under the spell of Mount Ararat, treasures from ancient Armenia. It's an ex exhibition about uh, archaeology, about, I think it is about 160 pieces from the History Museum of Armenia in Yerevan. And it tells about the pre-Christian period. So before Armenia was the first uh, state where uh, Christianity was eh, officially in the fourth century. And this tells about uh, the period before. And we have lovely objects in the, in the exhibition and also an, a relic, uh, a kind of hold piece from the Ark of Noah, because as you know, in the Bible, it says that uh, the Ark of Noah um, yeah, um, was hit the, the, the Mount, Mount Ararat. So this is also a nice story to tell in the exhibition. Next, please. And here you see, this is one of the objects in the, in the exhibition from, uh, from Yerevan. It's, a, it's kind of a small golden cup. Uh, and also you'll see the animals, the motives on the, on the, on the cup. And that's, it's very lovely. It's, it's, it's art craft and it's wonderful made. And um, yeah, we, we got a lovely, uh, lovely reactions from the people who visit it because they, they like it very much. The next please. Besides that, we also, uh, besides the, uh, the objects, we also, we also want to show what the people think about Mount Ararat. Um, and uh, you can see it in the exhibition. We, we made movies from, uh, from seven uh, people, uh, from seven perspectives, how they feel, how they, what their feelings is, are about Mount Ararat. We went with the national press, we went to Armenia in uh, two years ago, I must say, because uh, this exhibition has been postponed because of Corona. So I was there in February um, 2020. And uh, I also, uh, yeah, we spoke to people, to a priest, to the father of, uh, of the Museum of Etchmiat Sin, to uh, a guide in, in the museum. So uh, we got all, all different kind of views from about Mount Ararat. And it was very nice to notice how important uh, the, the Ararat is for, for the people in, of Armenia. Next, please. And we just um, we just ended in March. No, it was uh, we we had the the possibility to lengthen it with three weeks. So we we ended it in April. Uh, it was a very big art exhibition uh, from our side, Viva La Frida, about life and art of uh, the Mexican artist Frida Kahlo. I don't know if you if you know her or uh, have seen a work from her. This is, was a very uh, once in a lifetime exhibition, I must say. We got two important collections from the museums in Mexico City. Uh, the, 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 the paintings from Museo Dolores Olmedo in Mexico City and the personal belongings of Frida Kahlo in Casa Azul. And Casa Azul is the place where she was born and lived also with her husband, uh, Diego Rivera. Very nice to be there. And it was, it was for, us, for us, well, it was wonderful that we could uh, could get it to um, uh, to us and to the Netherlands. Well, uh, another thing was of course Corona, because as you can imagine, imagine this was a very very expensive exhibition. So it was very um, unsecure sometimes if we could uh, if it could go on or if we had to postpone postpone it. But finally, we could start it in autumn of 2021. And the next, please. And here you see, this was at the opening day, 7 October 2021, I think it was, with Queen Maxima, she opened the exhibition, and also because she's Latin American Argent from Argentina, and she was very uh, connected to the life uh, and um, the personal life of Frida Kahlo, a strong woman, and I think, I think we can say that Maxima is also a strong woman. So, the next please. I want to show you some examples how we uh, uh, have been dealing with, with commercial activities in, in uh, during this period uh, of Frida Kahlo. Here you see our uh, 
our conference room, the Statenzaal, it's called. Very beautiful place where we um, where we organize different uh, exhibitions. The next, please. One of our important um, uh, commercial activities is, of course, our membership with uh, with our friends. We call it friends from the Trans Museum. It's a foundation, and it has already now, I think, two thousand and two hundred uh, people are joining this uh, this membership. Uh, the age of the of these of these uh, of the friends is 55, 55 plus. Um, they got uh, they pay about 40 euro a year for uh, to be friend of the museum. And if they have a partner, then they pay together a 60 euro. Um, with this money, uh, this is a foundation. We can uh, we can buy new uh, new purchases purchases. We can buy new objects. Or we can do some restorations, and um, the people they got free entry to the museum, invitations to lectures, free subscription of our magazine, invitations to exclusive friends tours, uh, discount on prices in the, in the museum shop, and you notice that they are really true ambassadors for us. So it's very important uh, to have them with us, and I think we are one of the biggest. Um, membership of friends uh, associations in the Netherlands uh, by now. But of course, by Corona and people are getting older, so you have to also invest in new people in younger people. Next, please. And so we started uh, this year during Frida Kahlo, uh, the Young Culture Club. And this is especially meant for people about uh, 25 till 40. Um, we started with a kickoff event this year during Frida Kahlo. We had a club party in our museum, um, Viva Obamos, of uh, Fiesta de Frida. I don't know exactly what the name was, but it was very nice, uh, totally sold out. And uh, these people, they are paying now about uh, 120 euro a year. And they have, uh, I think, by now four events a year. And they can also, they, they have exclusive. Um, Visits, visits with artists, meet and greet with artists. So this is a very nice program. And we hope we do have now, I think, 35 or 40 people, but we hope that will increase in the next period. Next, please. The business club is also important for us. Um, we do, Assen, as I told you, we are in Assen, uh, in the region of uh, Drenthe. Assen is the city. And we do have now about 80 companies who are uh, lied with us by this business club. Um, they pay about uh, 1,500 euro a year. And for them, it's really a, a, a nice network to, to, to see other people, to see other companies, to speak to people to be one of them who is uh, the, the Drench Museum is, is, is the key attraction you should notice in Assen. So everybody wants to join it. So that's very nice. And it's still growing, this, uh, this business club. And of course, we do have, they can, uh, they can uh, organize themselves uh, evenings with their own relations in the museum. Uh, we, of course, we offer them uh, uh, the, the message of their names you see in, in all kind of communication uh, we do. And um, people like it very much uh, to be part of it, as we notice. And with the money, we can also, uh, we don't have a specific uh, destination for that. We can use it. In fact, we can use it for every everything we want. Next, please. The museum shop. Uh, I told you it's very important if you speak about commercial activity in our museum, uh, especially when it was about uh, Frida Kahlo. Um, we had a lot of uh, Frida Kahlo articles in our shop. It was totally Frida, Frida style. We did, we did got some, uh, some criticals about this because um, it was too commercial. Some people told us who visited the, uh, the exhibition. We tried to do the best in this and to be, um, yeah, as honest as we could be in 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 selecting the articles. Our book, uh, Viva La Frida, um, that that was the, the 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 top selling, the unique selling point, I should say. It was about fifteen thousand books were sold in the museum shop, 
and it got also a few uh, prices because of the design of the book. So we haven't had such a success with the book, I must say, till now. Next, please. The rental we do have um, in our museum. This is a new, new renovated um, uh, room in our museum, the Opkamer, we call it, and people can rent it for all kind of uh, for all kind of uh, uh, events, for a symposium, for a seminar, and um, we have two or three nice, uh, nice rooms, halls, which people uh, uh, companies can hire. Very also also uh, very good to do uh, as a commercial activity. Next, please. And we have weddings. This is not a very good shop uh, image, I must say. We have, do have weddings in our museum, uh, about 25 a year, I think. We are a wedding location, uh, notified as a, letting, uh, a wedding location for the municipality of Assen. And um, yes, it, it's, it's very nice. And we, 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 earn, we earn a bit of money with that, you could say. So it's very nice to do. Maybe we will also be in the future, we will have uh, a voting a voting station. I don't know if that's the correct word, uh, voting a poll station. When, when there are elections, that all, all these kind of things are possibilities. Maybe you could memorize when you want to do something together with the society or the the, the, the city where you in live. This is a, a very important um, aspect. I think also in uh, maybe it's also it has to do with the commercial activity. What we normally do in Assen um, when we start a big exhibition, we have a kickoff with all the companies and entrepreneurs in the city, the businesses, to uh, to stimulate them to do something themselves in the city. Uh, around this exhibition and that can be uh, that they design their shop that there are flags in the city all kind of things but in this case um, the companies in Assen they uh, they collected money to make a statue a, a booster from Frida Kahlo uh, in the city on a, on a very uh, a remarkable place in a very uh, um, yeah a very a, a hot spot in the city and well, uh, we stimulate this, but we don't we don't have to pay uh, for this. So it was um, about twenty thousand euro is such a kind of a thing, and it's um, we got enormous publicity with this. Uh, the international uh, media, um, for example, the Daily Mail, they wrote about it. So such a small town in Assen is going uh, Frida Mania was uh, was the title, I think. So it was very nice to see and people, there was a trip uh, in the city where people could visit this, uh, this statue or the statue of Frida and there were other things in the city. So we had a, a whole tour in the, in, in the town. Next, please. This was also part of the, of the, of the, um, the Frida mania. There was a, a, a parade during Dia de los Muertos. I don't know if you know the, the day of the death in Mexico, a very important uh, uh, day. Uh, and, and, and people, they celebrate it uh, to, to commemorate the deaf people. And it was, a, it was also a huge uh, success. Next, please. So all the shops, there was all decoration, as I told you, all kind of paintings in the city. The restaurants were in uh, Frida Mania style. And this did all this all contributed, of course, to um, to the to what the people uh, did buy in the city itself. You know, I think the total uh, spin off of of this exhibition was about six million euros um, for Assen. So that that is meant to be the money what they uh, spent besides of the uh, well the visit to the museum, but they went to the hotel, they went to the restaurant. They went to uh, to a shop, and we we got it back from the from the from the business uh, in Assen. They were very they are very happy uh, for us uh, with us, I must say, <laughs> because they uh, people they uh, they spent money at their uh, at their business. So it's very good. It's not always such an uh, it has not always such an impact, I must say, but this time it was um, yeah it was wonderful. Next, please. 
Fundraising, maybe uh, also uh, in short to tell you something about what we do in, in fundraising uh, related to Frida Kahlo or bits to, uh, to, uh, to the Mount Ararat. It also has to do, of course, with, with you want to uh, collect or, or ask money uh, for, a specific, uh, for a specific goal, for a specific purpose. Uh, that's, that's what is all about fundraising. You must have uh, a destiny for it and, and know what you want to buy or what is urgent for you. That's a very in, in, in important starting point. Um, next, please. We tried to, uh, concerning to Frida Kahlo, um, the exhibition, we also try to attract new public, of course, uh, target groups. We have, uh, we have our own traditional um, group of visitors. You, you may know them, the, 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 the cultural tourists, people about uh, 55 and older who can spend money, uh, at least uh, as it is in our region, who can spend money, who have time to travel. But we wanted to have a more diverse public with this exhibition. We wanted to have also uh, a more feminine uh, public. Um, we wanted to have uh, people um, from the LHBTE community. We wanted to have people with, uh, with physical restrictions. So um, we, um, we approached also funds to, um, to attract this uh, new public and to make a plan for that. So um, um, we attract also the, the, we approached the Turing Foundation with this. So with a, with a good plan and um, uh, the target was the new public, which we wanted to, to attract to the, to, the, to the exhibition. And this worked uh, wonderfully, uh, it, it worked wonderfully well. We organized a lot of activities, of course, to, to reach this goal and eh, this target. And you can think about debates, dialogues, uh, podcasts we made, all kinds of stuff to, uh, to, um, to be sure that these people would come. And we have seen in our inquiry afterwards that um, we had a lot of more younger people, uh, specific people from, um, um, from these communities than we had before. So that was very nice to see. Next, please. Also, we did some uh, educational projects uh, around Frida Kahlo. We uh, tried to cooperate with other with schools in and around Assen, and therefore we uh, approached an another specific fund. We tried to uh, get in contact with other cultural disciplines in the region and also to look for partners. Uh, this is uh, on the left side, it is the ambassador of Mexico in the Netherlands, and they, he played an important role with the embassy to also to, 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 do, to donate some money also for specific projects and to facilitate specific things around Dia de los Muertos because they had the, uh, the expertise and we, haven't, uh, we didn't have that expertise, of course. Next, please. Also, we are now, this is something uh, totally different, but we are now working on, I told you before, we are working on an, uh, on, an, uh, on, 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 on one, one component is the, are the international exhibitions. The other component is, is in fact, a new a presentations of our collection. Uh, so give the world a view of Drenthe, I would say. We, um, we are investing in this project now and we want to have by the end of 2023, a totally new, uh, new collection presentation, totally different than we did before, spectacular, with uh, innovation, multimedia, specific digital things. And now we are now trying to also to get funds for that, for specific uh, funds we try to reach now to get uh, these specific techniques or this uh, specific um, um, objects um, uh, that we can finance them all the way with the goal to attract again, new public. That, that's, that's often is that the main goal. Uh, for also for to get funds, I must say. Thank you. The next, also to receive achieve a specific object, of course. Um, this is another painting from Vincent van Gogh. The other one we have, and we bought this at an auction uh, three four years ago, I think 2017. We bought it together with the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. 
because it was two and a half million euro, we couldn't uh, afford it to uh, to pay it on our own. And um, we made an, uh, uh, a deal with the Van Gogh Museum. So uh, we said, okay, if we can, if we can preserve this for the collection of Holland, that would be wonderful. And uh, so we now have a deal that every six months, um, I must say, or one year, it is in our museum, and then it goes to the Van Gogh Museum. So it relates every time from Van Gogh Museum to Drenz Museum. And we got also we got the money from the Vereniging Rembrandt for this. They uh, they contributed to to pay this uh, to buy this object was also about 500,000 euro, I think they invested in this project for, for our two museums. And so we are very happy that we can, um, that we could um, uh, could take this uh, for, for Holland because this, this, this painting is one of the, I think one of the seven paintings he made in Drenthe. So it is very important for our heritage to keep it. Next please. Okay, and now I think I'm going to the end of my uh, speech. I have, I've put some things here together for fundraising. I think it's always important to, to know what your specific goal is. Um, why do you need it? Uh, why do you want it? Um, is there a connection with your own collection, with your building maybe, your public, the accessibility of your building with the society? What is your strategy? How do you want to achieve the money? Or how do you want to ask the money? Well, will you approach a fund or will you go to, uh, to crowdfunding? Could also be a possibility. What will be the impact when achieving your goal? So that, what does it mean for the public? Uh, that is a very important question. And sh you should also um, let it see eh, for the public, for, for, the, for the people who you ask money. Uh, what does it mean? Make images, make videos for it. So that makes it very lively. What is your own budget? What you can contribute to it? And all these things you must combine, of course, in a, in a project plan with a realistic time plan. Um, that, that's a difficult one, of course, I understand. And so during the meantime, continuously take care of an update of the development um, uh, related to the people, organizations who are involved. So that you give them give them news of what is happening, and make sure, of course, that you can justify what you have done uh, at the end and in, in an evaluation report, also to the public and to the to the people involved. Let them know what has happened, and that could also be um, in a crowdfunding project. I must say we we didn't have experience that uh, crowdfunding. We are now starting with it, so we hope that we can. Uh, that could also be an elevator for for our old building um, that we can um, try to to um, to to um, to get money with a crowdfunding project for for this elevator. But we'll see. Next, please. Okay. Um, yeah, I hope it was it was clear, but I. Gladly want to hear if there are any questions or do you have specific questions? And I want to hear, do you have uh, also ideas about uh, how you deal with uh, commercial activities and fundraising in your museum? So I'm very curious to know. Uh, I will stop sharing my screen for the convenience of everyone. Uh, thank you, Paul, so much for the presentation. It was uh, almost like we were at the museum. <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> I hope it was clear if you are, but maybe there are questions. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, there might be some questions. Thank you so much for your presentation, Paul. It was so nice to yeah. see all of it. It is very nice to meet you again. And uh, uh, I hope and this project is very fruitful for our museums and generally from the, from this, for this uh, sphere. And I want to thank Lana and uh, everyone for this, uh, for this opportunity uh, to participate in this project. And uh, I can tell you that we don't have uh, the special person and we don't have the special department um, of, uh, for the fundraising and generally the direct directors or sometimes the Ministry of Culture, Education and Sports help us uh, to 
uh, find the, the funds and uh, make some kind of projects connected to, to the um, uh, money that we need always, the museums that uh, museums need always. Our museums are thematically absolutely different from each other. Um, there are seven museums. This is archaeological, history, art museum. Now we are reconstructing the uh, religion museum, but generally all the projects that we are running, uh, uh, these are the projects um, granted by the government. We have this in the budget. Uh, we, we, we Generally, we don't have the person that uh, could help us, uh, for example. We don't, not only we, in the region, there is no person that will help us to find the funds and uh, to work with the fundraising, especially connected to the art and the music. No, absolutely not. I, or I don't. I don't. Know. I, I had. Uh, I had the situation. I was searching for this kind of person, but in fact, I couldn't find. So exactly. these are our problems, and of course, um, we we are trying now. I'm trying to search the uh, persons that will train our um, co-workers, but it is not so easy to. Uh, it it needs uh, long-term training, so it's not so easy to um, to have such kind of person in the organization. Let's say like that. Thank you. Say if I'm crazy, but until today, it's still a bit dirty. Uh, to ask for money. Uh, if, if a curator or a director asks for money, they rather give it to those who are a little bit like the slicky salesperson, the marketing person who's too much marketing. Um, so most of the time we try to ask it via the, the content people of the family um, because that works better. That I learned during my career as a, uh, in while fundraising, there are a lot of people uh, who either have money or have a foundation with money and they need to spend it and they need to spend it in a good way. And they, when you approach them as a partner, not begging for money, but as a partner that you can do some things together that they cannot do alone, it's easier for you, but it's also better for them and you can ask for money. So don't feel like a beggar. That's that's really important. Organization, for example, the funds for the the money for the exhibition is in, included in the budget uh, for the events and uh, exhibitions. We have such a um, how to say the subdivision in the budget, and we are including uh, this money for the whole year. We are uh, doing the budget before one year and uh, the Ministry of Education, Sports and Culture, it is, they are approving this uh, budget, signing this budget and uh, giving us the money. But uh, the amount of money is not so big generally, it's um, quite small amount. So we, because of this, we can't think about the international projects, for example, because there are special issues that should be considered while we are uh, making international projects, for example, international exhibition. And of course, in that case, we have problems. I agree with you on uh, the same situation is here as well with prayer. Uh, the year we just um, make a plan um, and there we have all our exhibitions, international projects, everything that we need money for and we just provide them with that plan and they always just approve this document and we got the budget and spend it like it was uh, written in our plan. If we need any extra money for any projects, we can just apply them that year and get the approval as well. I would choose hard working and being loved and defended and supported. And I think on days when I was really, really, really tired, I would think, oh God, why? But most of the time, I think I would prefer the really network of people that support you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Marianne. And Bjorn, it's your turn. 
I just wanted to say, but actually the conversation already bridged to that area. Um, fundraising is also fundraising to keeping your subsidies. Um, so that's also fundraising. So um, in the case of an absence of fundraising people or tasks or a department, it is most of the time a marketing department or a marketing person or a deputy who is responsible so, uh, for the fact that the director can apply all the time for uh, government money. That is the same as fundraising. So um, it, it's a hard job to ask for more money. It's uh, sometimes fundraising is just asking for permission. Uh, can we go abroad or can we be a part of this or that? If you look at the Azerbaijan the Carpet Museum, which is behind me, uh, they were on the World Expo in Dubai. Uh, do they pay for it? Maybe not, but the government paid for it. So it's just asking, can we be there? Um, so being sponsored is also the same sometimes as fundraising. I, I actually have two questions. Mm -hmm. um, I, I saw you organize a lot of events and a lot of um, extra things for the, the fundraising part. Um, yeah. So I wondered, as um, for instance, the Frida Kahlo exhibition, um, yeah. do you have a bigger apartment then for, for doing all the work or how many people work on, a, on an, uh, an event like that? Yeah. Exhibition like this, that. This, yeah, this, this was of course a, not a normal event. Also for oh. us, it was. What I told you it. It was far above the two million. I think uh, to give an indication for the budget uh, we, we we had here here for the total exhibition, and that also had to do with the loans from Mexico. As you know, uh, we are together. I work with uh, my team is with six people. So in fact, we organized um, um, two years ago. In 2020, we organized all kinds of working groups. So I did a marketing and communication campaign. There was, an, uh, there was a working group on events. There was a working group on the opening. There was a working group on the education. And uh, also the design, of course. And, um, um, well, the content of the exhibition, that was also, of course. And, uh, and how yeah. long before the exhibition did you start with all those groups? started a year before, uh, one and a half year before. We started to start to have the first session together with all people. We hired somewhere a place uh, out of Assen and then we came to, uh, to, to the concept of the project plan, yeah. to do the goals. We defined the goals, the targets we wanted to have, the, the target groups we wanted to have, um, how many visitors we uh, I thought before Corona, uh, 200,000. I thought it was possible, but at the end we had 140,000. But we had also we had a we had a lockdown uh, for five weeks. There were all kind of restrictions, as you know, in um, in the Netherlands. So it was very good at the end. But I had I also hired two people during our uh, during the project because we also had to. Uh, postpone it huh? two times so that was also it was very unsecure and we didn't know yeah we didn't know for sure if it was going to succeed so, so that this, could also yeah so on the one hand you have this very very huge project two million yeah. one yeah. and a half year yeah. work but you started with something which is really simple and every museum could do that having a bunch of friends who support you every year. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's then, totally, yeah. And yeah. then uh, this pays, uh, uh, pays you every year. Um, but then you uh, listed everything that you give them. Yeah, yeah. Which was a lot. So I was wondering, do you still earn or is it more that you have uh, supporters? Or yeah, I, I think the, I think the last what you say is okay. We use the money, of course, what I told you for new new purchases. But I, we have been discussing the the, the fee which uh, which they pay now. Uh, it's now it's now forty euro. Uh, that, that's not much for what they get. They get free entrance. They get our magazine. No, it's beautiful two times a year. Uh, there is a pre preview, exclusive preview. So 
we are also doing now some benchmarking for other museums on how are they dealing with these um, with the uh, with the price for the friends. <laughs> that is an issue. But you, you're correct what, uh, that you tell this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's an issue. So maybe you should. But on the other hand, as I said, it's very important to have them as ambassadors. Yeah, and. Uh, I'm, I'm very glad all, also with this young culture club we now all we now starting with. In fact, the Groningen Museum, I, I we, we were yesterday on a working visit at the Groningen Museum. They are doing also the same thing. So, and these people come not only from Assen, but also from the whole north of the Netherlands and um, artists, uh, designers, all kind of people. And um, they can also be good ambassadors, I think. Yeah, so, so. then it's a group of, of friends who really also can help you. Yeah. yeah yeah that's correct and they have more maybe they grew they they attract other people who come with them introduce to the to the events yeah so that would be nice yeah so yeah. you can always ask them to do that so you yeah, have, of course you have a yeah. starting point yeah. yeah and ambassadors i'm very glad with that idea we also did it for the frida Kahlo exhibition i didn't tell tell you before but we had about 10 um 10 uh, national wide known uh, ambassadors for the exhibition and they posted social media uh, small small films of the exhibition of their what they what their link is with Frida Kahlo so yeah you have to pay them of course for that but in the end it worked out oh, thank you okay thank you Marianne for your questions anyone else But it's very quiet. It's the end of the session. <laughs> <laughs> and any comments that anyone want to share the experiences uh, with commercial activities at their museum? I yeah, I was wondering maybe also, uh, it's a different different situation now maybe in your museums in in um, in Armenia. I can imagine, but I'm very curious how how you um, how you experience these these things I told, or, or do you do, do you also the same? Are, is this coming to you or is it totally strange or? As yeah. we talked before in the first session that there were the state budget. So uh, there is as well, of course, restrictions in earning money in this way, but in uh, distributing, no, like. Okay. Yeah. And for example, in uh, if we, if you want to achieve of if, if you want to purchase purchase a new painting or an object for your museum, and you need money for that. We have a state um, budget for that. State budget for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but this is for the state museums, but the other private yeah. museums course, they have to do anything. Course. Yes, with it there, so themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes the foundations or. Um, yeah, they have the donation sometimes for this, yeah. But as for the state museum, just um, um, in our case, I can say that it was just a huge, um, more active um, process in terms of purchasing the artworks uh, or some objects for the museums in 90s. Then it was, then there is a gap. Uh, okay. Yeah, but uh, now it has started somehow. Um, but uh, for the specific museums, not all the museums can apply for this kind of luxury, yeah. let's say. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. And, okay, yes. Okay, thank you, Lana. Uh, anyone else? Bjorn, did you want to say something in between? I just wanted to compliment uh, the Museum of Paul because they managed to organize in a very un-Dutch way uh, super international themes and super international exhibitions, which not many museums in the Netherlands uh, achieve. Um, yeah. And uh, of course, it's for many museums interesting if they want to work professionally. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I could already yeah, also, imagine uh, like a corporate yeah. exhibition or something or something super cool. Uh, yeah, in, in yeah. This it's it's also part. I think it has to do with that we are organized. Are we we work also in an international network of museums, with uh, museums in in Germany, Luxembourg, 
I think Switzerland, mostly archaeological museums, but there is continue, continuously there is, an, um, there is discussion with them of how they, well, they, they gave us ideas and we have ideas. And sometimes we sell, of course, also the concept of an exhibition, as we did with uh, Iran. I don't know, for two years ago, we had an exhibition, exhibition about archaeology of Iran, and we sold it to uh, a museum in Alicante, the concept. And uh, on the other hand, the people in Tehran, they wanted to have our collection in, uh, in, in their museum. So that was very funny to see all these Dutch, uh, the, the, these paintings of the landscapes of Drenthe, to see, <laughs> to see them in, uh, in a museum in Tehran. So that was also nice for us. And also, not, yeah, it was a good, good cooperation between two countries. And it has nothing, nothing to do, of course, we had, they ask us also, okay, political correct, or can you, can you cooperate with, with the country? But we also say it has, it has a cult cultural purpose. Eh? We want to show the culture of, uh, of the country. And that's very important to, uh, to, keep, to keep that. Okay, thank you Bjorn, thank you Paul. I think yeah. we... Can... Yeah, there is a comment, oh, yeah? Lilia. Yeah. Uh, thank you Lilia, uh, thank you Paul. It was very interesting uh, what uh, work you're doing in your museum. Uh, it was very interesting how you're managing uh, to um, make friends uh, with uh, this, uh, diverse uh, age of groups and especially yeah. with the young uh, young people and I have some question about you're making some event for them but uh, do it is I guess it is really to say about the anything about the results but did you already see um, some kind of loyalty from them or are they bringing their friends uh, just to see the museum not only for the events uh, yeah, that's difficult to say by this, now. Because uh, this, this age uh, is very problematic yeah, yeah. in every museum yeah, in, in every country. Yeah. yeah, you're totally right. It's very difficult because also the, the age from 13 till 20 is, is difficult. So we have also, as you, maybe you have also programs for schools, education, that's, that's not a problem. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, I, I cannot say not so much about results, but it's now starting with 35 people. So we have seen at, in the Frida Kahlo exhibition, we had a, a lot of young people for all kinds of events, but that was specifically for Frida Kahlo, you know, and that Frida Kahlo- Because it was Frida, yeah. It was Frida, yeah. it was, Frida, it was they, <laughs> they different items. It has to do about, uh, about her life, her, her misery, about her power it was. And no, so now we want, we, we also, we want to keep these, these groups. And that is, yeah, we, we are figuring out, it, ha it has to do with our program, of course, with what kind of exhibitions are we showing in the future? So in fact, we should, um, we should develop a line in which we can say, okay, this is also interesting for these younger people again to come to Assen because they will not come to an archeological uh, exhibition of uh, Armenia. That's a totally different kind of group. So yeah. that's the, that's we we are still searching on that how how we are going to do that. But mm -hmm. it's 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 so it's such a pity because we had a lot of uh, we have email addresses we have all kind of uh, uh, database from these people, and then what is the next step? Yeah, because in Georgia we have such kind of situation. Uh, people, uh, the perception of the museum, people think that museum is only for the education and they are not uh, always in the mood to be educated. And uh, they don't see <laughs> yeah, the museums, yeah. in, in Georgia they don't see the museums as a place for no. leisure or just to have your free yeah. time or just to be relaxed in there. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, yes. and, 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 and after the also school they don't go in the museum. It is all because the main audience is, is the school children for all the museums, uh, for all the museums in Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. Now I saw that maybe Campion that also can describe in, in the new definition of the ICOM, it's told that museums are there for enjoyment also. Eh? Enjoyment yeah. is very important. In the old one yes, no, no. as well. Yeah, maybe it is the problem is in Georgia, maybe in Georgia it's the problem of the museums themselves because they think that they have to uh, educate people around them and not just uh, to let them <laughs> to be relaxed <laughs> around, around yeah. the exhibits. What, what kind of museum do you, 
Where do you work in uh, what uh, kind of museum? Uh, currently, I'm working at the Toys and Dolls Museum, uh, but uh, the museum has not a building. We have regained building yesterday. It was, uh, uh, you know, said that uh, we will go in this building uh, after two years. We will open. Uh, but okay. before I was working in the museum, it was Museum of Cinema, Theater, Music, and Choreography. But uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> the problem yeah. is it was the same there. But I hope that uh, in this museum there will be no problem because it was always before when the museum had the building, it was always having the people around because it was all about the joy, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, nice, yeah. Okay, thank you. Maybe someone also wants to comment from the participant. Who, sorry, I'm it's, not. Uh, it's for us, so we are making the, uh, how to say, the recreational uh, areas near the, in the museum uh, yards, for example, in history museum, Hartona, I was named uh, we are making now the cafe with free Wi-Fi and working area okay. and it will be yeah. free, free to come in public. and free, free yeah. of charge. Yeah. So I think yeah. these kind of areas will help uh, to, uh, how to say, to attract. Yeah, to attract people, yeah. yeah. We also, we, we, we are still I think you can only buy a ticket to come in our museum shop and to come in our museum cafe. cafe. So in two years or three years, we want to open to have a public space where people can come and make their choice in this public space and not um, not have to buy a ticket before. As, and and that, that is in... in, in yeah, we uh, have the open, opening ceremony 13th yeah. of uh, June now. We are just in the process so preparation so i think it will work okay nice yeah thank you thank you tiana uh i think if nobody has any more questions we can wrap it up okay thank you paul for joining us today and uh, yeah. everyone for being here as well <laughs> thank you okay, thank you everyone have a nice night and see you next time okay bye bye Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.